Hello everybody, my name is Dainavana Samrasinghe. So today I'm going to present our work on the privacy analysis of government websites and mobile apps. And this work is also co-authored by Ashish Adhikari, Mohammed Banad, Amar Yusuf from Concordia University. So for at least the past two decades, governments have been gradually transforming their traditional government services uh, to online space. So United Nations, they measure the progress of digital transformations of governments using an index known as the EGDI. So United Nations, they observe a gradual increase of online government services from year 2003 to 2020. And there have been several factors that contributed to the increase of online government services. One being the proliferation of mobile services. So nowadays you would find four out of five users, they carry a smartphone. And there had also been an increase in the use of social media. Uh, so uh, social media is another channel where governments can use to reach out to their citizens. And with the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, governments have been accelerating in moving some of their services uh, to the uh, online space. So these factors have created more opportunities for trackers to track users that use these online services. So commercial trackers are included on commercial sites and reasons for this fact includes the provisioning of a better user experience and improving user profiling for purposes like monetization. However, users do not expect to have commercial trackers on government websites as government websites involve interactions using sensitive information of users. However, if uh, commercial trackers end up on government sites, that will make it possible for commercial trackers to correlate use activities across commercial websites and government websites. And this will eventually allow commercial trackers to better profile users. So past studies have comprehensively studied tracking by commercial trackers on commercial websites, but there had not been any comprehensive study to measure tracking on government sites by commercial trackers from a global perspective. So unfortunately, from preliminary observations of our study, we observed that it was quite common to have commercial trackers on government sites. As you see in this slide, it is a US federal student aid site that happens to include 16 commercial trackers that are blocked by the Ghost Street Privacy Ad Block Extension. And there had also been incidents reported in the past where government sites and apps have become malicious due to various attacks. And such government sites and apps can uh, be compromised by adversaries or by the government itself. So in the case of the latter, governments can compromise their own sites or apps with malware for purposes like surveillance. So as you see in this slide, which is an example of a government site pertaining to a courthouse in Paraguay, which is flagged as malicious by the AVG virus engine installed uh, on my desktop. Uh, and this site was also flagged as malware and compromised by 10 security engines used by VirusTotal. So one of our goals is to implement a methodology to collect websites pertaining to governments as there is no existing standard methodology for this purpose. Then we wanted to study the extent of tracking in government sites and Android government apps by commercial trackers. So here I want to emphasize that our objective is to focus on tracking by commercial trackers and not by any other type of tracker. And in addition, we want to identify government sites and apps and various tracking domains included in this that are flagged as malicious. So there have been some past studies on privacy and security of government sites, but they are mostly focused on specific jurisdictions or emphasizing a specific problem related to privacy and security of those websites. So studies one, two, three uh, in this slide, basically they focus on security issues of government sites in countries like Hungary, Libya, and the United States. In particular, these studies found weaknesses with those government sites, such as the use of vulnerable web technologies, misconfigurations, and insecure programming practices that leads those sites to be compromised. The fourth study, which is the last study focused uh, on uh, measuring the HTTPS adoption of the web, where the authors found 72% of the government sites are not using HTTPS. In addition, to, uh, on those sites that are using HTTPS, the authors observed weaknesses such as the misconfigured certificates, the reuse of keys, the use of insecure cryptographic protocols. So in contrast to these studies, our focus is basically to perform a privacy analysis of government sites and apps from a global perspective. So now let me explain our methodology. 
we first collect garment sites from various sources. Then we extract Google Play links related to Google Android apps from response content of these garment sites and download the APKs of those apps. Then we complement another set of garment sites we got from the work of Singanamala et al with our collected garment sites and use the consolidated, consolidated garment sites to perform a web privacy measurement. We also um, pass these websites through virus total to identify those websites that are malicious. Uh, thereafter, uh, we use the downloaded APKs of government apps to perform static and a dynamic analysis and scan the APKs of the apps through virus total. Then finally, the instrumented tracking data and the virus total results that we get from the analysis of government sites and apps that, that uh, are used uh, for further analysis. So now let me explain in more detail uh, on uh, the various processes or methodology that I highlighted in the previous slides, starting from the collecting of government sites and apps. So we first prepare a list of seed government domains from several sources, such as the GKSoft and the GSA. Then we use a Google Doc to query for other related domains and subdomains of government sites. And during this process, we discard non-government domains. So an example of a non-government domain would be a political party site. Thereafter, we perform a deep crawl to extract links in government sites that points to other government sites. During this process, we discard uh, again non-government domains and, and links that are irrelevant. So an example, uh, so examples of uh, links that are irrelevant includes uh, links to PDF files, uh, links to uh, image files, and so on. Then we complement the set of government sites used in a study by Singanamala et al. to arrive at 150,244 government sites from 206 countries and territories. So from here on, I will refer to the countries and territories as countries for the sake of convenience. Thereafter, we use specific heuristics to identify and extract APKs of government apps and collect 1,166 apps from 71 countries. Then we use the open WPM privacy measurement framework to crawl 150,244 government sites with 15 parallel browser sessions in headless mode and instrumented third party scripts, third party cookies, fingerprinting APIs that are used for tracking. We then use the easy list filtering rules to distinguish known trackers from unknown trackers from third parties that we collected. Then we use, uh, then we also measured tracking from a subset of sites in the European Union and state of California by crawling the sites using a VPN from the respective jurisdictions to find tracking in those jurisdictions as websites uh, in those locations are subject to privacy regulations like the GDPR and CCPA. We also scan all government sites we collected with virus total, but we exclude results from certain security engines like the CRDF and Quetra as we found them to re uh, return unreliable results from those security engines. We use domain categories to identify malicious domains. In addition to the site categorization from virus total, we also leverage the community commands for identifying malicious government sites and tracking domains. To analyze the Android apps, we use static and dynamic analysis techniques. So for the static analysis, we use the mobile security framework, which is also known as a mob SF to identify tracking. SDKs included in Android apps to determine known trackers in mobile apps. We then use light radar to identify the use of these known trackers. So an example of a use of a known tracker would be mobile analytics. We then use Firebase scanner to identify insecure or misconfigured Firebase data stores. For the dynamic analysis, we use MITM proxy to capture network traffic to ins inspect sensitive information like the default user credentials, API keys that are sent over the wire. We also use virus total to scan APKs of Android apps and domains that, are, that these apps are communicating with to determine if any of those are malicious. So our methodology suffers from limitations uh, and those important limitations I'm highlighting in this slide. So during crawling, some government sites do not return the expected response or uh, some of the government sites time out if they are crawled from outside of their home countries. Uh, and this was very apparent for government websites uh, from Iran and Egypt. So the third party tools and utilities we used may have caused a potential bias in our results, 
However, those tools are also used in studies that are published in other top tier conferences. We resorted to use uh, manual verification of results to identify false positives and false negatives. Um, and such verifications are non-trivial to automate. We also, uh, we only considered uh, Android apps, Android government apps for our analysis and did not consider using iOS apps. So now let me present some of our results. So we found most known tracking scripts included are from YouTube followed by Google. We observed it is quite common that these government sites include YouTube videos and Google Maps on site content. Uh, in addition, we found common fingerprinting APIs like the Windows Navig Navigator, the RTC in JavaScript included on common sites. So a combination of stateful and stateless tracking techniques can be used to better profile users. We also observed full story session replay scripts included in government sites, which were used to send sensitive information to remote servers. So full story provides options to disable session replaying from page elements, but unfortunately, site admins have not leveraged them in government sites. We also observed 49% of EU and 69% of California government sites include trackers, even though such jurisdictions are subjected to GDPR and CCPA privacy regulations. With respect to known tracking cookies, we found a large number of government sites set YouTube cookies, and about 13% of these cookies were set to expire in year 9,999. There were also a considerable number of government sites with Google cookies. Therefore, if a user logs in to a Google account, it is possible to have YouTube cookies associated with Google cookies for uh, enhanced tracking. If you look at the presence of known trackers on government sites from a global perspective, we observed a large proportion of government sites in Russia, around 89% include third-party scripts. And also 112 countries set known tracking cookies on all of their government sites. From virus total results, we found that there were 304 government sites and 40 government apps that were flagged as malicious. The top countries with malicious government sites include Indonesia, China, and the United States. And some of the high profile government sites that were flagged as malicious include the Royal Thai Air Force, the Yemen Parliament, and the Palestine Civil Defense. As with the government sites, we observed that Google and Facebook tracking SDKs are the most included known trackers in government apps. Besides that, we observed seven apps sending logging credentials over the clear, and most of these apps were used to perform various civic responsibilities by users. We observed nine apps leaking hard-coded default admin credentials that are sent over the wire by analyzing the traffic data. We do not use these credentials for any intrusive validations for ethical reasons. We also observed two apps leaking API keys. So in terms of disclosures, we disclosed eight government websites flagged by five virus total engines and 38 government apps flagged by at least one virus total engine and 11 government apps leaking credentials and API keys. But we only received responses from developers of two apps. One of these apps had an experimental feature with a hard-coded API key where the particular experimental feature was subsequently removed. So in conclusion, we find government sites and apps allow commercial trackers to collect data about their citizens and out of all commercial trackers, Google dominates in tracking, both in government sites and government apps. Since government sites do not have a fallback mechanism to avoid from tracking when compared to commercial sites, governments should periodically review their sites and apps for potential privacy and security exposures. So with that, I conclude my presentation and thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for the talk. Okay. Um, so I guess I will let the audience to ask questions first. So uh, any questions for Laya is here with us. So take your chance. So I have a quick question, I guess. Yeah. Um, maybe Carlo, you go first. Thanks. Thank you, yeah. um, thanks a lot for the presentation first. I was wondering, how do you define a tracker? And so that would be my first question. What is a tracker, actually? And the second question is, 
what's the difference? I mean, you mentioned commercial trackers. What's the what what kind of other trackers are there, if not yes. commercial? Yeah, the, for the first question, uh, we use this easy list, um, uh, easy list and easy list privacy rules uh, to identify trackers for the websites. But for the mobile apps, uh, we consider tracker uh, if it's a like a, a like a tracking SDK. So that's how we kind of define trackers. Uh, for this uh, second question, um, what was the second question again? Uh, so the first one is uh, what is a tracker, and the second one, what kind of other Oh, the other, other, yeah, other, other okay. Uh, so uh, there could be other trackers, like um, other third parties, like um, uh, uh, may, maybe kind of uh, governments itself, like uh, governments of uh, like uh, other countries can track uh, users of another country. That is also a, a possible tracker, uh, uh, and also um, uh, uh, like there can be uh, like the th uh, the first part itself can be. Uh, can be kind of monitoring the users, but you cannot um, specifically say it's tracking. But uh, yeah, so those are the kinds of uh, other trackers that uh, we we thought uh, that uh, would be kind of 